issues as a colleague, but principles brought us together. I remember vividly as their chairman himself, Oshimole. No yes. Please. You are protected. You have, protected. you have the protection of the chair. <laughs> himself, the governor of Kaduna, um, Erufai, Oshimole, that all of you know about. And most of the governors, he particularly talks nothing but about the unity of this country and how we can all move Nigeria forward. So my friend and my brother and my colleague, there's a let down rule here. That in this whole country, Nigeria, only senators and women should be allowed to take a bow and go. <laughs> I've accepted that. And the matter became worse even when they are limited to leader and deputy leader speaking on my behalf <laughs> against my wish. <laughs> be that is I want to plead with my colleagues as a, as a that though this man is not a senator, no, he's not a but he had brought, he has made senators. Oh. May you please. And he's, 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 he's very gender sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> and Aisha can bear me witness. Yeah. <laughs> For that reason, please, can we honor us? Oh, no. The giving to whom honor is due. Take to bow. take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> yes, yes. I so submit. Yes. Thank you. Your Excellency, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator T. A. O. G. Ochen, Abia Central. Your Excellency, we have had a pact here, and the pact that I will keep to is that you don't exceed two questions, and that your question has to be direct. Your Excellency, former Governor, and now minister to be. I congratulate you for this feat. But it will look somehow if a person of your caliber and magnitude will come here and just take a bow and go. Because we want to draw from your experience and inspiration. Therefore, I'll just ask one. I reduce it to one simple question which you can answer. And that is the issue of taxation. Today, there are multiple taxation everywhere across the tier, three tiers of government. Ministries, parastatals, you know, imposing taxes on one issue. And this does not make for ease of business. And we want to encourage 
business in Nigeria. Excellency, going into the executive council, what will be your attitude towards this so that businessmen will be encouraged to invest and we will grow? Thank you very much. Senator Hassan Mohamed Gus. During your explanation, you have said you have been paying salary in front. But from uh, the papers, I read many, many uh, uh, mails, papers, we read that you cannot be able to pay salary for the last one year before your departure. Even though you explained, but you didn't explain in detail. Please, can you say more about salary, issue of salary in your yes, state before you leave? Thank you. Uh, the Senate President, now sitting as chair, Thank you for the opportunity. My name remains Senator Ishiako Abo, representing the people of Adamawa North Central District. I want to join my colleague from Oshun and from the entire Southwest to extol the virtues of this great Nigerian. I remember in 2012 when I contested for the chairmanship of my local government as a very tiny young man. I visited you in Abuja, I mean in, a, in Ikeja, Jere Ikeja in your house. You never knew me. You asked me to come in and I stated my problems and you told me to come to government house in Oshobo and meet you. When I go there, I thought I would stay there for three days without seeing the governor. I filled a form, you saw my name, and you ushered me into your office upstairs. And you gave me the whole of your salary for that month to go to Adamawa and contest election. Today, through the grace of God, I am one of the people confirming your nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I want to join my colleagues to please Allow this detribalized, honest Nigerian to take a bow and go. And also ask of Mr. President of Nigeria using this medium to give you a very big ministry. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Taxes. My, my leader, the truth is Nigeria is a federation. And I'm a federalist. You see, there is a limit to what we can do on taxation in the Federation. Let's be clear on that. However, I understand where you're coming from, and I agree with you. But I will differ slightly. I wouldn't have loved to go into this because it's going to be controversial. We have left the rich men in Nigeria without discharging their responsibility to the citizens, particularly on taxation. So I'm going to pioneer privileged taxes for those who have huge resources or wealth from which Nigerians must tap. If I go into this, there might be some ill feelings in some quarters. I won't go deeper than that. I will recommend serious taxation for wealthy people in Nigeria. If that will now translate into lifting the burden on the states and the local government to reduce their pension for taxes that make poor people, poor people still give out of their inadequate resource of course, I will have been satisfied. So I will advocate a just taxation system that will breed inequality in our polity. Salary in Oshun, I want to repeat again clearly that the narrative on salary in Oshun is either mischievous or based on ignorance. 
Nobody can pretend that the Nigerian economy did not suffer a huge downfall from 2014 up until when the current administration came in with some palliatives to support the states. Of course, Oshun was quite hugely affected. Why? We had invested heavily in infrastructure that was totally neglected before. And I must add quickly, probably people don't know this. Personnel cost a loan. Personnel cost a loan on my, my uh, revenue, both statutory and generated, was 63%. Personnel cost a loan. There is a history to that. Oshun was taken out of Oyo. Before that, Oshun provided close to 70% of the senior civil servants in Oyo and were all asked to move. So, Oshun population is, Oshun, Oshun civil service population is huge, but is top heavy. We are asked levels 1 to 7 that constitute 72% of the public servants, they take less than 1 billion. While the top cut, the fat cuts in, the, in level 8 and above, who are less than 30% of the, of the civil servants, take over 2 billion. So I'm all, I'm, I was therefore forced to do interesting balancing. Short of retrenching people, I had to constitute a panel under the leadership of Comrade Azan Sumonu to monitor all, in, all inflows, all revenue income, and apportion whatever is left to salaries. And that we did innovatively. How? We knew that officers on levels one to seven cannot even survive on their salary if fully paid. So we pay them their full salary, not only officers, even pensioners, pay them their full salary. I never owed anybody on levels one to seven a dime of their salaries. Officers on levels eight to 10 had 75% of their salary throughout my tenure. And that ended July 2018, please. We stopped, we stopped any partial payment or to anybody in July of 2018. Don't forget I left in November of 2018, but we stopped this part payment by July. We are stabilized. It was only those officers on levels 12 and above that had to earn $50 salary between July of 2015 and July of 2018. That's about salary. On testimony, I thank you. I've forgotten. Please, I'm happy that you have reminded me. I give glory to God. Mr. Chair, that especially the nominee has only five minutes left. Especially to be thanked is Ashwa Bilamay Chinubu, who tutored me in being large-hearted and kind to whoever comes to me for support. Tiru Surajuddin Ajibola, Senator Distinguished Senators, I'm Dr. Surajuddin Ajibola Bashiru. I extend courtesies to distinguished Senators. I must say here that it is paradox of democracy that I'm here sitting in this ado chamber on hearing confirmation of somebody who is my leader, my mentor and my benefactor by the grace of Almighty God. I served under him throughout the eight years of administration in Oshu. So the story that he's telling is a story that brings player to us that with legal resources, we were able to see what we can do to alleviate particularly the mass of our people, not the bourgeoisies. And I will say that for those that talk about salary, I stand here to say, that as commissioner in second term, my take-home pay total is 184,000 naira, 
None of us commissioners got an official car, and I did not stay in official accommodation. I served in the first time as Honorable Commissioner for Regional Integration and Special Duties. I was also the Chairman of Consultancy Board. In the second term, as Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice. One salient challenge that we have as black people is how do we harness our resources? How do we get finance to bridge infrastructure deficits? By the time we have to get government in Oshun, he made it clear. He said, Bashiru, if in two years we could not make any impact in infrastructure development, we should apologize to Oshun people and we should just leave government. And of course, the month that the government took over, the, we learned that one billion was taken in overdraft before we came in to even pay salary. And yet, we have projects that we, we need to do. So, told us, we don't have any choice. We have to raise money by deficit financing to ensure that we accelerate financing of projects that will impact on the economy of our people. What did we do? We had two options, to go by way of commercial lending or to open our books to the public and go to the public sector. Money market, a capital market financing. And that is the route that we took based on the parameters of the economy of Nigeria in 2011 and 2012. So when, as he has narrated, 2014 challenges came of all the parameters change and then we have to adjust the way we have done. But that did not stop any of our projects. I'm happy to announce to you, and I say it proudly here, that I feel satisfied that I've worked with my leader, with my mentor, and I feel satisfied that when we are confronted about stewardship, we are happy that God has used us to assist in lifting, particularly those people who have never had opportunity of enjoying government patronage. I thank you, colleagues, for the honor to allow him to bow and go. Thank you, my leader. Distinguished senators, uh, I want to thank God for giving me this unique opportunity. I don't know if, if ever I will have the opportunity of recommending this man standing before me today because he's my mentor, he's my role model, he's my leader. Even though we schooled together in the Polytechnic from year 1976 to, seven, to 78, before I left for University of Ife. But it is a common saying that human beings do change. But this is a man I met to be a, a, a fighter for the downtrodden masses, right from the 70s. And he has not changed up to today. Uh, in 1977, we are to do our IT student uh, industrial okay. training. Without seeing each other, there are a lot of placements in Southwest. Only three of us out of the whole lot of students from the Polytechnic choose Kano without seeing ourselves. So the, we are three that went to Kano to do our mm -hmm. IT. Incidentally, we didn't know anybody there. We have never been there. And we had to be sleeping in only one single room with a three and a half bed. So don't, anybody that wants to eat dinner will not sleep on that bed. You will sleep on the mat. It's an interesting thing. And where we used to trek from, uh, uh, is it Bonpire to Brigade? Every morning. Um, later, after 30 years, I was a general manager at uh, Osun when my friend mandate was returned to him and he came as the governor of the state of Osun. Um, on his coming, I was surprised the way he managed the state. In spite of the meager amount of money coming to the state, he quickly realized that international interventions could help the state. And he, he even went for credit to pay the counterpart fund of all the 
international intervention in the state of Osun. And uh, apart from the fact that Osun State, among all other states in the Southwest, was chosen for rural access and mobility project, throughout my 35 years working with international organizations, World Bank, French Development Agency, Islamic Development Bank, and so on. I've never come across a time when the bank came up to say that a project run by a state is the best in Nigeria. By April this year, the World Bank, and I'm saying this knowing fully well that everybody in the world in Nigeria are hearing me, including the World Bank themselves, they came up and rank also state rank, which uh, Ogbeni was running as the best in Nigeria. To so this, I want to take the privilege of being a senator today to say that Ogbeni Ralph Aregbesola should take a bow and go. Thank you very much. Fifty-nine-one. After a question has been proposed, a senator writing his prayer may claim to move that the question be now put. Mr. President of the Senate, sitting as the chairman. Um, I second the motion, and uh, that the question be asked but after my own. <laughs> second the motion. That's all. Okay, those in favor of the motion that the nominee takes a bow and go, say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. You can take a bow. 